If you want your sculptors to have more character than a comedian laughing at their own joke, watch along as I generate, shape, and animate fantasy-inspired, stylized hair. From the geometry of the base mesh, which is just a copy of the top of the head, I want to generate hair strands. So I bring up the Add menu with Shift A and use the search field to find a Distribute Points on Faces node. and align rotation to vector node. An instance on points node. A realize instances node. And a quadratic BZA node. Once I've put these in place, the hair strands are effectively generated, but not yet visible, until I add a node that sets the material, a node that converts curves into meshes, and a node that specifies a profile for those conversions. The first group of nodes generates the hair strands, while the second group sets their visual properties. Among them, keep an eye on these particular nodes as they directly contribute to the appearance of the hair. Now, while you try to guess the actress I used as reference for the sculpture, I'll make some changes to the hair strands. First. I randomize the length of the strands using a trim curve node that takes its input from a random value node. Then I make the tip of the strands pointy using a spline parameter node and a map range node. Finally, I make the shape of the strands just a bit more interesting by adding some randomness to the radius with a math node set to multiply and a noise texture node.
Here, the spline parameter node outputs a factor that starts from zero at the base of each strand and increases to one towards the tip. This range is then reversed as the factor passes through the map range node to gradually reduce the radius to a point at the tip of the strand. When combined, these nodes add natural variations to the volume of the hair and at the same time ensure that each strand tapers towards the tip. Also, if you think you know which actress was the reference for the sculpture, let me know in the comments. At this point, I have the controls to create some relatively simple hairstyles, but I find the current setup quite limiting, especially when I'm working with longer hair strands. So the next step is to pull the hair towards a single point, adding a stylistic flow to the shape of the hair and giving me one more element of control. This, combined with some random twists and turns, sets the stage to eventually animate the hair strands. To pull the strands towards a single point, I bring in a position node, a vector math node with its operation set to subtract, another vector math node, this one set to scale, a spline parameter node, a map range node, and a set position node. The outcome of this branch of nodes is a single point defined by the subtract node where the strands converge. In addition to the point of convergence, I can also adjust the strength of the pull with a map range node, allowing me to model both tight and loose hairstyles. Now to transform the current hair strands to exhibit random twists and turns, I bring in a spline parameter node, a map range node, a noise texture node, a vector math node set to scale, and last, to bring it all together, a set position node. Here, the spline parameter node plays two roles. First, it acts as the input coordinates of the noise texture node, making sure that the random variations are continuous along the length of the strands. Second, it outputs to the scale node, ensuring that the root of the strands are not affected by the noise and remain firmly attached to the base mesh. While this setup does add randomness to each strand, the result is not exactly what I intended. What's happening here is that for each strand, the noise texture node takes in the same input, generates the same output, creating the exact same variations along each strand of hair. That's why all the hair strands look the same. The solution 
is to make each and every one just a bit different. This I can achieve with a curve info node which conveniently gives me a random value for each strand. And a math node set to multiply at which lets me combine that random value with the output of the spline parameter node. So now, with all the parameters available to me, I can set things up to give the impression of a gentle breeze flowing through the hair, or wild, turbulent winds. This brings me to the point where I set the stage to animate the hair strands. Procedurally, of course. And truth be told, most of the stage has already been set. So all that remains is for me to bring in a scene time node and a math node with its operation set to multiply add. Here, the scene time is combined with the input coordinates of the noise texture node. This makes the input coordinates gradually move forward along the length of the strands, pushing the random variations as they move. With the speed controlled by the multiply add node, the result is a wind-like animation that flows naturally along the length of the hair. But there are a few things to consider. First, if you decide to use this hair generator on a different model with a different size, you'll need to adjust these parameters accordingly. Second, I kept things simple for this tutorial and limited myself to a single base mesh for the scalp, which is fine for simple hairstyles. But for cases where you're after something more sophisticated, take the time to experiment with more than one base mesh. And finally, if you're keen to learn more about geometry nodes, make sure to visit my channel and explore the possibilities of a procedural workflow. As for this one, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.